This is an oxygen concentrator. This machine literally saved my grandmother's life and we owe everything to it. It's a great invention. Sitting at home, this machine can pull in ambient air, remove the nitrogen and output highly oxygenated air going up to 95 or more percent oxygen concentration. When I came back to India from college and saw our concentrator, the first question I asked was how do we know it works? There's no way of knowing if these machines do anything. For all we know, it could have just been blowing air and if that was the case, at two in the morning when my grandmother's life depended on it, we would have then gotten to know that it didn't work. When there's so much importance put on one machine, so much dependence on one machine, we need to know if it works before all hell breaks loose and you have to use it. So I hopped onto Amazon, hoping to buy an oxygen meter, thinking I could get one for maybe three or 4,000 rupees. Well, I was shocked to see that the options I had were either way too expensive or were just not available to me. I was shocked to see that even the hospitals near me didn't have the equipment to test my concentrator for me. And the one hospital that did have a tester only had it on rent temporarily. So I set out to build my own. After a week of grueling work, I built this. O2D2 is the fully open source DIY oxygen analyzer. Battery operated, the meter gives you an accurate oxygen reading in one minute and can be built in a day. Well, how does it work? I found a seller in Delhi who sells parts to repair ventilators. Turns out, a lot of ventilators happen to have this Honeywell oxygen sensor inside them. Once I had the sensor in my hands, I used an analog to digital converter with a gain to read the output of the sensor. The Arduino interprets the output and displays it on this little screen right here. That's it. Since this was possibly my first ever proper open source design, I wanted this thing to be as close to a product that could be mass manufactured. It has three buttons to navigate menus, a built-in one minute timer, and even has options to recalibrate the sensor without touching any code. The wiring inside, which I think is pretty neat, is all done through standardized connectors and a single PCB. The sensor has a fully 3D printed enclosure with a power switch on the side, a removable battery compartment on the back, and a place to attach your oxygen lines up to. Getting this thing to be a product prototype and not an Arduino with a mess of wires took days of hard, painful CAD modeling. Before we got to this questionably good looking versions, we had failed versions one, two, three, four, five, and a bunch of random failed parts. It was hard, but now all these designs will be available to you for free. Though I wanted this to be a prototype of a product, I didn't want to lose the ability to expand this creation. So there's a slot at the back of the case to upload new versions of code, and there's even an I squared C communication port open on the side here to add more sensors or modules that can all be powered just through this one meter. As people asked me to test their machines for them, I realized that several of the machines that families in my neighborhood depended on were not delivering the oxygen they promised. And that was scary. So this summer, I set out to test as many oxygen concentrators as I could with O2D2. Well, how do you use it? Power on the sensor, set the expected ambient air oxygen concentration, plug one end of your tube to the sensor and the other end to the output of the concentrator and start the one minute timer. According to the data sheet, the sensor only takes 12 seconds to reach its final value. But to test conservatively, we wait one minute for each reading at each flow rate. It's that easy. I did this 13 more times and got this beautiful set of data. Since I was testing the oxygen concentration of these machines, I decided to also check their current draw and weight as indicators of the compressor used inside the machine. To measure the current, we used a simple clamp meter I could clamp onto this little extension board I made, and to measure the weight, I just used a simple bathroom weighing scale. Now, before we get into the results of any of my tests, let's understand flow rate. Flow rate literally just means how much air you're blowing out in one minute. Five liters per minute just means that this little nozzle right here is spitting out five liters of air in one minute. Now, I'm not a doctor and none of this is medical advice, but to put it simply, the worse your patient's condition is, the more air they need. A good oxygen concentrator should maintain its 90 plus oxygen concentration, even at its highest flow rate. There's no point in blowing 5 liters per minute of air onto your patient if your concentrator is outputting, say, 30% oxygen concentration. We have 21% of oxygen in our air anyway. You might as well have them sit under a fan at that point. Alright, so what did our data tell us? If you want to skip to certain observations, here they are with their timestamps. The first observation was a simple one that was sent around on WhatsApp. Compared to some of the other stuff I got on WhatsApp, this observation was a really useful one. If you have a concentrator that claims to be 5 liters per minute, it needs to weigh almost 15 kilos. 
Additionally, a 5 liter per minute concentrator should pull around 1.5 amps of current from your wall socket. Let's call these our first two tests. If your concentrator passes these two tests, according to our observations, its graph should look like these. Even as the flow rate goes up, the percentage concentration of oxygen stays above 90%. If your concentrator doesn't pass these two tests, it's probably going to look like this. See how we get a nice 90% concentration at 1 LPM that just drops down to 30 or 40% concentration as you increase the flow rate to 5 LPM? This is not a good machine. Now what was really concerning was this little guy right here. He passed our first two tests, but his graph didn't look too great. After increasing the flow rate to 5 LPM, the oxygen concentrator dropped down to 78% from 90%. Why? Well, this brings us to our second observation. Age. We think it's because it was a really old machine. Like, really old. And so, that's why all these machines come with a total hours used timer built in. There's nothing wrong with buying a second-hand machine. But, always check this total hours used meter to see if your concentrator is aging. Next up, the optimal operating point. If you manage to build a meter like this or find a seller near you and test your concentrator, a variation of 2-3% to is perfectly normal. This initially concerned me, but on testing more and more machines, I realized that these machines are designed to operate at an optimal flow rate, and their performance varies on either side, as you can see from the graphs here. The key takeaway? A few ups and downs aren't much to worry about as long as your machine is staying above 90% concentration. Next. This is a pretty bad one. I only saw a few concentrators that had an oxygen concentration readout on them, and I was pretty surprised to see this, and I thought it was a great feature. However, on playing with a few of them, I realized that the display wasn't actually connected to a sensor. It was just spitting out pre-programmed numbers that didn't even match what my meter was reading. Now, this doesn't mean that the readout on your concentrator is wrong. It just means there is a chance of it being wrong. Again, if you can, get it tested. Now we have branding. I'm not mentioning brand names in the video because I don't want to get slapped with a defamation lawsuit, but also because it won't really help. Why? Well, I recently discovered this cool little data analysis toolkit on Excel and decided to run the t-test on some of these concentrators to see if statistically they behave the same way. The unfortunate thing I saw was that the concentrators that looked exactly the same actually performed different to one another. The only explanation I have for this is that these machines are either made with a lower quality testing process or are probably all bought from the same factory, just each brand buying them at different acceptable tolerances. So the little sticker on your machine means nothing, and neither is the form factor of your machine. Make sure your concentrator is new, passes our first two tests, and isn't aging. Finally, location. This was possibly the most interesting. On first testing my concentrator, I was happy my meter read 91% concentration, but I was surprised to see that it was that low. It's a good machine from a really good brand. When I was analyzing the data for this very video, I also noticed the curve didn't seem to match my optimal operating point theory. This theory isn't very scientific and it's not a law or anything and was just more of an observation that I had made, but this made me curious. I chose to ignore it as an anomaly and I moved on. The next day when I was packing my concentrator back up, I realized it was kept hidden under my desk throughout my tests. I unpacked it, moved it to the middle of my room and tested again. The concentrator jumped from 91% to 97%. When I plotted it, I had the biggest smile on my face. Look at it, that's a huge difference. It also follows the optimal operating point theory now. I don't know how I feel about the fact that an Excel line plot excited me this much, but I've chosen to ignore it for now. The key takeaway, give your concentrator enough room to breathe. To concentrate air, it's removing and exhaling the nitrogen. It can't really do its job very well if it's just going to breathe the same nitrogen back in. The invention of the oxygen concentrator is an amazing one, and we have years of research to thank for it. It's reliable and it's convenient. It's about 45 seconds from the time you pull it out of its box out of storage to the time you have it turned on connected to a mask on your patient. There's no leaky regulators to deal with, no empty tanks that need to be replaced, and no need for a frantic call in the middle of the night looking for an available oxygen cylinder. In the middle of the oxygen crisis, my father found one oxygen tank with great difficulty for my grandmother, only for it to have a broken regulator that leaked the entire tank empty. In the middle of the nation's largest shortage of a life-saving gas, a broken regulator leaked an entire tank empty. The summary? Well, here are the three key takeaways. 
Number one, before you find yourself in a situation where you need to use your concentrator, get it tested, even if it has an oxygen readout. Number two, just because machines look the same, it doesn't mean they perform the same. And lastly, number three, location is important. Your concentrator is literally breathing. Give it some room to work to get the most out of the machine. With all this said, I want to add two things. First off, if you ever want to make a sensor like this one, I will have the design files and diagrams on my website and my email is always open for questions. Secondly, seeing the things I've seen here, COVID is ruthless. Having a concentrator doesn't mean you're safe. It means that at best, you have a backup plan. I don't know where this virus is going or what it's going to do. All I know is it's taken away way too many people from us and it doesn't spare anyone. If you have the opportunity, go get jabbed. Stay safe. Recording? Yeah. Why didn't you go? Come on.